Good evening, everyone. I'm your host, Ria, and I would like to welcome you all to Internshala Trainings Learn with Icon. Sometimes some questions get me thinking. Are we still in that era where mainstream careers are only considered successful careers? Or are we still uh, very, very scared to take the plunge into careers like creative writing, screenplay writing, or practicing any art in general? Let me know what do you think about this in the comments below. But we have somebody with us to answer this question, to maybe give us examples and maybe we can learn through his life journey. We have with us an icon today who made it very big in the writing industry. Let's welcome Mr. Kulpreet Yadav. Hi, sir. How are you doing? Hi, hi sir. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, I think किसी भी और guest के लिए उनकी journey शायद मैं अपने viewers को खुद से बताती. But sir, for you, uh, since you are a wonderful orator yourself, so I think people should hear it from you. So sir, please tell us about your wonderful journey. Okay. So my journey in brief. Uh, 1988, I did my graduation in science from Pune. After which I joined the Naval Officers Academy. I became an officer. I chose to become an officer in defense services because my father also was in Air Force. I had a wonderful life. I went to different places. I commanded units. Uh, I had a great time overall. But in 2006, I wrote my first book. And uh, that was a different kind of a high. I really enjoyed that process. And at that time, I had no clue that I will consider becoming a full-time writer at some point in my life. But having written three books in 2014, I... decided to leave my well paying government job and i became a full time writer and it's been 8 years since i've written about 14 books in all including ebooks and a short story collection and it's been a great journey um, thanks thanks to all the readers the publishers the media etc i've been told that considerable number of books of mine are there in print available for people to read so uh, i think i'm very grateful uh for this that sounds like a wonderful journey sir seems like you were donned actually a lot of hats uh and uh, as easily as you put it across for us i'm sure that all these things must have been uh, really big for you and uh, we're glad that you wrote these books because we get to read such amazing books written by you uh Thank okay you. i'll just uh, take one moment here and i'll let everybody who's watching us right now know that you can drop in your questions for sir Uh, in the comments, and we'll take them up towards the end of the session. Uh, okay, so so coming back to our conversation, just you have told us that before you were in the navy, and after that you have explored as an author. Explore kiya. So, sir, I am very curious to know, and I am sure that the people who are watching us also want to know that, sir, your career ki trajectory, you have always imagined it as such, or the idea of becoming an author came to you much later in your life. Sir, I am very curious to know, and I am sure that the people who are watching us also want to know that. मैंने कभी भी ऐसा इमेजिन नहीं किया था इट केम टू मी मच लेटर इन फैक्ट आई के इट केम टू मी इन 2006 थाउजेंड सिक्स एज आई सेड एंड वेन इट केम टू मी आई वॉज इंसिडेंटली आई सेड दिस इन पास्ट इंटरव्यूज ऑल्सो आई वॉज एन हावर रेलवे स्टेशन बिकॉज आई वॉज पोस्टेड इन हल्दिया विच इज क्लोज टू कैलकटा मेरी ट्रेन काफ़ी लेट थी और मेरे पास एक डायरी थी और पेन था बिकॉज मैं नॉर्मली अपने थाट्स लिखता रहता था और उस वक्त मेरे को आइडिया नहीं था कि मैं एक फुल फ्लैज नॉवल लिखना शुरू करूँगा सो आई रोट अबाउट I don't remember now, but maybe about ten thousand, fifteen thousand words of what was to become my first book, and uh, I was very fortunate that that book was made and was published. Everything was done very quickly. So yeah, it 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 was wonderful that first step. So I had never taken this decision before. In fact, I had never thought in my life that I would become a writer. I was a ठीक ठाक सा गवर्नमेंट ऑफिसर था अपनी लाइफ को एंजॉय कर रहा था मेरी शादी हो चुकी थी मेरी दो बेटियां थी और उस समय हम लोग हल्दिया वेस्ट बंगाल में पोस्टेड थे मैं हाँ रीडर एक बहुत अच्छा था शुरू से सो वेन आई वॉज यू नो इन स्कूल बिकॉज ऑफ माई फादर एंड माई मदर वी हैड अ गुड कलेक्शन ऑफ बुक्स इन माई हाउस सो दे वॉज अ रीडिंग हैबिट यू नो विच वॉज इनकलकेटेड इन मी बाई माई पेरेंट्स एंड ऑल्सो बाई द वंडरफुल टीचर्स टू द स्कूल दर आई वेंट Uh, mostly in Chandigarh and uh, Pune, because of which I did have a reading habit, and I had some kind of, I think, a hidden admiration uh, for writers. All that mm -hmm. 
was not known to me it was in my subconscious but when i wrote my first book it was a kind of realization that ha main book likh sakta hu aur sach baat batau to wo achhi book nahi thi wo bahut hi ordinary book thi uska uski story to theek thi but i think the writing was all over the place it was pretty average when i look at it, look at it now though at that time i was very excited but ha journey ki shuruaat aise hui okay uh i think sir it's it's very courageous of you to even say that ki aap khud ek you you are telling us that you know the writing was average which i think gives a very good message that maybe you wouldn't be as great as you would think in your head you are in the first go but it's a journey where you explore yourself and eventually get better at it uh great so sir uh, related to the question of uh, career of writing uh, there's another thing which i would like to ask कि जैसे हम बहुत सारे लोग हैं जिन्होंने गेम ऑफ थ्रोन्स के बारे में पढ़ा है यू रेड द बुक हैरी पॉटर सीरीज इज अ वेरी कॉमन बुक दैट आई थिंक अ लॉट ऑफ चिल्ड्रन रीड एंड इन सब के बारे में सर सब जानते भी हैं बट वेरी फ्यू पीपल एक्चुअली नो हु इज द ऑथर ऑफ पोथर पाचली और द गर्ल हु लव अ पायरेट सो आपको क्या लगता है सर दैट विद सच अ रिच क्राफ्ट इज देर समथिंग दैट वी आर मिसिंग आउट ऑन द मास अपील हियर इन इंडिया um see i will be very frank here uh in india i think the reading culture has always been um you know very less if i can say in comparison to the western countries by which what i mean to say is that the storytelling tradition in the subcontinent is very strong but it is storytelling in the form of you know the oral storytelling or storytelling by cinema or by right. dance or by music you know that form of storytelling is very popular but storytelling in the form of books is not really that popular even today um mm. however uh, the the youngsters are now reading a lot of books uh, of you know the game of thrones is very popular as you said um um and harry potter series there are two reasons for this one these are incredibly rich and interesting okay. moving books you know they anybody who reads it will get hooked on to it to these target the younger audience and today india's younger audience is perhaps more open but the books yes. that you mentioned whether it is the girl who loved a pirate thank you very much that's my book or pathir mm-hmm. panchali which is of course a book which is written long time ago uh, uh, and it was of course been adapted into movies couple of times these are books which are not intended for a younger audience these are these are normal novel these are not young adult books we can call uh, got and um, harry potter as young adult novels so i i think uh, there are two reasons one you know we are not writing for the younger people because uh, i don't want to take names here but the but the authors who have actually experimented with trying to target the younger readers in india during the last 4 or 5 years have done significantly better so i think uh, all of us uh, you know need to play a role in this whether it's school parents the society we need to inculcate a reading habit amongst the youngsters and when they become readers obviously when they grow up they will continue to read other books also yes i think that's a very agreeable point so even if uh, somebody is not looking at it as a career i think reading in itself is very liberating it gives you a lot of knowledge in general uh great sir okay so moving on uh, sir apne 2018 mein you uh, won this award at gurgaon literary festival for murder in pahar ganj which was an espionage novel and you won the best fiction author award for that so after winning that award after seeing that people loved it uh, did you understand that indian readers do like have a pattern or probably they have a favorite genre uh, and should writers be delving more into such genres Mm, see first of all that uh, experience was uh, truly wonderful i had just not expected this this to happen though for me uh, the biggest achievement was actually to be featured among those top 5 books out of some 200 or i don't know 300 odd books that they short they had long listed or they had in their you know collection that they were considering out of that right. coming in top 5 was you know incredible for me i was not even prepared when i had gone for the event and suddenly when the time came for announcement announcing the award i was called to the stage and given uh, the award with you know all those things so it it was uh, a very pleasant uh, shock i can call it because indeed it was shock but it was very pleasant because i think murder of pa- 
Murder in Park Ganj is an intelligent novel. I think so. Yeah. Um, I worked a lot on the craft, uh, on on the plot of that novel, uh, and uh, here was, of course, the proof. What kind of novels uh, the novelist should write? You know, the the pattern has been set over the years. Uh, yeah. Certain genres, of course, sell more than others. At the moment, in Indian market, if you see non-fiction, is huge. Um, I don't have the you know figures right now, the latest figures, but I've been told that non-fiction is selling almost seventy to seventy-five percent, and fiction is selling. Fiction list is getting smaller and smaller by the day. It has always been that way in the Western countries, though sixty sixty percent probably non-fiction, forty percent fiction. But in India, the fiction was fiction and non-fiction were kind of Equal uh, till five or six years back, but non-fiction is now taking lead. So, um, uh, you know, instead of getting into fiction, non-fiction, or genres, uh, I personally feel, you know, from the core of my heart, that there is always a reader for a book that is written well. So, I think yes. uh, as creators, we should not really get trapped in these terms, which are act, which have actually been created. by the trade people you know by the businessmen by the bookstores yeah. how to sort them how to transport them how to display them etc or by the media etc but as far as a writer is concerned you need to tell a story the story could be non fiction the story could be fiction whatever comes to you and you feel compelled enough to write that is yeah. what uh, you must write i've experimented with different genres people say that i should stick to one but you know i i just can't because when i want to write a particular story i do um i never thought till some till uh four or five years back that there would be a time in my life when i would actually be writing a romance novel but i do have a romance book called the girl who uh, sorry um beg your pardon the last love letter it's a yes. it's a romance novel i was not very confident of writing it when i when i started writing but the but the story and the process of writing was so Uh, as you use the word liberating and interesting and moving that i ended up writing a book which is done well it's one of my highest rated books um i never thought i'll write military history i'll be very frank though i was a sir, officer in uniform 23 years i worked but i was not really that much interested in military history at that time i don't know for what reason uh but when i wanted to write uh, uh, you know battle of rezangla now i want to write another military history book so i think we all keep changing through our life and yes. and we should sometimes not make too many plans you know we should take life as it is as it comes true sir that's true uh, i just have a follow up question question in context with what we were just talking about since you mentioned sir that it's not really that you should always stick to one genre or you should just boggle your mind with this thought but does this actually uh, come as a challenge to people who have just started writing writing budding authors uh in deciding what they want to write it is certainly a challenge but um, what is life without a good challenge so True. for example uh you know let's talk about some other field maybe acting so if you've done an angry young man action hero role and yeah. someone challenges you to do your next film as a comedian or you know a, a, a rom-com now 90% people would perhaps take a step back and say no i'm going to stick to my my area even even the experts would probably encourage the person to stick to that area yeah. but the one who will take challenge head on two things can happen either he'll just fall down so that risk is yeah. always there but then uh, as i said i mean it's always good to accept challenges but it is not easy uh, i would not recommend this to everyone if you feel you are comfortable in a particular genre uh, romance thriller horror you know non fiction whatever whatever you feel comfortable with you should try to stick to it but if you have a inner voice which is asking you to go in a different direction to to experiment then you should not curb that inner voice as well yeah thank you so thanks for answering that uh, now sir jumping on to a very interesting topic uh, your latest book the battle of rezangla aur aap me se jo bhi abhi hame dekh rahe hain and they don't know about this battle let me tell you that this is based on a true incident जहां पर 120 इंडियन सोल्जर्स ने 5000 चाइनीज ट्रूप्स को फेस किया था एंड उन्होंने चाइना को लद्दाख रीजन को ऑक्यूपाई करने से भी बचाया था सो दिस इज एक्चुअली अ ट्रू इंसिडेंट व्हिच इज सर्स लेटेस्ट बुक सो सर माय क्वेश्चन हियर इज व्हाट मेड यू थिंक ऑफ दिस टॉपिक एज यू सेड दैट अ मिलिट्री टॉपिक और यू नाउ वांट टू राइट अनदर बुक ऑन इट व्हाट वाज दैट फर्स्ट थॉट दैट केम टू योर माइंड सो एक्चुअली क्या हुआ कि you know the battle of rezangla 
के बारे में मैं बचपन से जानता हूँ उसका रीजन ये है कि बैटल ऑफ एजांगला वॉज फॉट बाय द इंडियन सोल्जर्स हु मोस्ट ऑफ देम हेल्ड फ्रॉम हरियाणा एंड आई एम फ्रॉम हरियाणा एज वेल एंड हमारे गांव से भी कुछ इसके सोल्जर्स हैं एंड दे आर ट्रीटेड लाइक अ यू नो प्रॉपर वॉर हीरो इन दो विलेजेस सो यू नो एज ए सेड माई फादर वॉज एन एयरफोर्स एंड एवरी ईयर ड्यूरिंग समर वेकेशन वेन आई यूज टू गो टू माई विलेज आई यूज टू सी दैट काइंड ऑफ एडमिरेशन एंड रिस्पेक्ट एंड you know the way people used to celebrate uh, these war heroes so uh, but you know after coming back from the village talking about this particular battle in school and later on in college and also after i wore wore my uniform i realized that nobody actually knows about these uh, these soldiers who had actually laid down their lives to protect a very strategic point of india which is uh, you know location region in india which is still with us today and uh, nobody knows the story so it was But then you know what can I do? So I had also this thought prop perhaps was there in my mind. But then, like anyone else, like everyone else, I also did nothing about it. This is about three years back when one day uh, early in the morning I thought that, you know, uh, again in a voice, you know, I thought that if nobody has written a book from sixty two till now on this battle, then I'm going to be writing this book because out of those hundred twenty soldiers, hundred uh, ten had sacrificed their lives, and out of those hundred ten, two are related to me by blood. so uh, i thought this is something that i must do for these lost voices you know and i should do something so that you know they don't these fallen heroes do not remain heroes only in their villages but the nation comes to know about their sacrifice and incredible valor uh, i'm i'm so so very grateful that i wrote a very detailed proposal i sent it to penguin which is my publisher for this book and uh, they gave Uh, you know overwhelming support for this book and the book came out uh, it is very well researched i've got it here it's my uh, most important and i'm very emotional about this book it has recently been launched in hindi as well uh, by national book trust um, um, you know it is uh, as a part of uh, azadi ka amrit mahotsav on 15th of august yeah. two days three days ago um, so uh, that was the reason i i wrote this uh, book and about the about the other other thing that you asked that why i want to write another book on you know indian military win uh, in the future which is probably uh, you know just going to come out next year in august that happened because uh, when i wrote this book i was invited to many villages in haryana and you know people treated me with so much of respect and they you know i i somehow became uh, a voice for them to bring the stories of the real heroes which they could not for the people in in the nation and and the whole world and one of the program was uh, about battle of hajipir now incidentally battle of hajipir was fought in 1965 and i went and attended that program as one of the person who had been invited and i was listening to these people who had survived and the family members of the people who had uh, laid down their lives go to the stage in a village beautifully organized program with some 5000 people in it and uh, with so much of emotion they are talking about the valor of indians and i researched more about this battle and i realized that this is really an incredible battle once again about which there are no books so that will be my next book uh, coming out in august next year right okay. so so first of all all the very best for the battles of rizangla and we are really really looking forward to the next book uh okay so sir uh, another question related to the book itself uh because this book was based on a true incident so so did you feel that there was any sort of challenge or were you torn between the balance uh, of maintaining the balance between facts and storytelling because this book is all about facts everything that is real and but at the same time as an author storytelling is also very important to add that flair uh so so was there any moment where you had to choose between the one of them out of the two it, it's such a very good question and i think it was um, it was a challenge because 1962 was a long time ago um we we don't have that much of information about this battle but i was very really yeah. fortunate that i went and interacted with 13 kumau 13 kumau uh, the chali company of 13 kumau is the one that fought the battle and uh, the commanding officer at that time was able to 
you know, um, show me some documents and share some information uh, from his museum, etc. That helped me get more information. Of course, there are uh, Ministry of Defense archives. I could go and interact, um, you know, with four survivors. One of them passed away after after the book came out. So three survivors were still there in the late 80s, one of them early 90s. Um, so getting information from all these sources was difficult. And I, you were right. I, all, I always had this you know, pressure on my mind that I should not really be, you know, this is a factual book, so I can't really be adding any fiction from my own side to, to, yeah. to the book. Because perhaps uh, after this, there will never be a book written on this, on this particular battle. So that pressure was there, which is why this book is just about 50,000 words. Um, normally a book would be about in, in the world range of about 70,000 70, to 75,000 words, significantly lesser. And uh, even to bring it to, it's not even 200 pages, but even to bring it till here, we had to add uh, pictures in between, which is of course a very, very moving, very interesting information and pictures. What I did simply is, you, you, you've, used, you've said it right, that you know to make it uh, more palatable, to make it more interesting for the younger audience, I wanted to use the storytelling technique. So I used yeah. simple dialogues. For example, all of us know uh, what, um, you know, if you take a Jeep ride, for example, I mean, it's not very hard to find out. You take a Jeep ride from Leh to Chushul, where the airfield was at that time. So you know what is around you. You know, you, you know, the, you know the topography of that place. So instead of just writing about the topography and a Jeep going through it, um, I have used... Uh, uh, you know, characters and voices talking about the things which are as, as they are, right? right? So when you write dialogues uh, instead of just a description, you know, uh, it, it becomes far more interesting for a reader to visualize and understand and enjoy. So I've used dialogues at places where, where required. Um, that has added, uh, I think, a flavor and uh, the reviews are out there for everyone to go and watch and see. Uh, second thing that I did was I worked a lot on the on the flow of the events, you know, because this battle was happening not just in Rizangla, but when the, when the when this battle was happening in Rizangla, there were some pockets close by where also the China had attacked to mislead us. And prior to this battle, also you know um, they had come and captured certain pockets here and there, which we were able to retrieve later. So you know, a lot of things were happening in that sector. All that I was required to bring out, you know, in, in a story coherently so that people understand and visualize properly. Okay. So I had a big chart and on that chart I was, you know, I had drawn all the locations, time uh, and I made a proper event schedule and that had to be rejected a few times till the time I thought this is, this now flows well. When you read the book, uh, you will get a sense of uh, the events. Right. I think that was a very, very smart move, I would say, sir, because uh, as I was also looking at the book, I could see those pages, those pictures, and uh, that child inside you instantly comes out as soon as you see pictures. There's something graphic for you to see there. Uh, so amazing, sir. That, I think, is a good point, and all our budding writers watching us should take a note of that. Uh, okay, sir. So here we'll take a little bit of a detour, sir, from our questions and answers, and we'll quickly play a game with you, sir, if you you're up with it. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Uh, it's called it's called the rapid fire game, and uh, so the rule is very simple, sir. I'll ask you some questions, and unse related, jo bhi pehla thought aapko aayega, aapko wahi answer dena hai. Zada aap nahi sochega. The answers have to be very rapid. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, are you ready, sir? Shall we start? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So, which one is your favorite book, sir? Always so so hard to answer this. I really do not have a favorite book, but uh, one of the books that really had an impact on me was, like everyone else in the world, was Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Yes, great. Uh, a book that made you emotional or a book that's really close to your heart? I know I'm talking about my book, but I think Battle of Rizangla indeed made me immensely emotional. I think I've not had a more emotional uh, event in my life, perhaps. Okay. Uh, are you a book or a Kindle person? Definitely a book person. A book you would like to give to others? Oh, uh, 
I, I, you know, I, this is something that I keep doing because I buy a lot of books and there's a library here yeah. in my house. And I think we just two months ago, me and my wife, we gave away some 300 odd books. So all the books that I buy, you know, we, we finally uh, don't have space. So we give it to the people of society. Okay. Uh, so the three of your all time favorite authors. So when I started reading, uh, of course, uh, I started in when I was in, I mean, after the comics and, you know, the the, the children's books. Um, I think 10th, 11th, 12th, I was that time reading all these thrillers that used to come. I think I'm still uh, very fond of my memories of reading James Sadley Chase's books. Uh, right. Frederick Forsyth later, because of the content and my orientation towards espionage, towards military, etc. And now, I think, um, right now, I think Lee Child thrillers are great. Okay. Jack uh, Reacher what? series. Okay, great. Uh, so, sir, if your autobiography was to come out, what would be the title of it be? <laughs> I was here. I think that's all. Um, I'm, I'm yet to achieve anything major in my life. So, yeah. Great. Uh, what's your favorite pastime? So, let's say apart from reading. Um... Thankfully, my wife inside. She's not listening to me. So, cooking. Uh, I like to. I like the idea of cooking. Uh, though I can't cook many dishes, but I like doing it once in a while. Great. Uh, a milestone you recently achieved. Um. So I've diversified now. So I have uh, been very fortunate that four of my books have been recently optioned by a production company, and. Uh, I've got some acting assignments, and I'm really, really upbeat about uh, about these things. Great. Uh, one last question, sir, and this is a fill in the blanks question. So I write because dash. I write because uh, I think I want to tell a story. Um, and the story is inside me and I'm not, I think the story is good enough or worthy to be shared in a way that it will move and change people the way it is impacting and changing me. Right, sir. And I'm sure you're doing a great job in that aspect. Uh, that was that was all. That was all my rapid fire questions for you, sir. I think you've given some amazing answers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, let's let's just go back to our conversation. And uh, so I, I'll just ask another question. Uh, so, sir, as we discussion, the theme is all about writing, the journey of creative writing. Uh, so, sir, our audience definitely wants to know how the writing industry works. What happens inside? Uh, so, sir, if you could just give us uh, a brief, brief walkthrough uh, of how, uh, and every, how everything works there, what is the process? And her step pe aane wale challenges ke mein bhi, sir, agar aap bata sakte hai uh, hai, bahut lamba topic hai, but I'll try to make it as simple uh, and as easy to follow as possible. So, sure. uh, writing industry is a very good industry. Um, talent ko yahan pe um, respect milti hai. Um, process aise work karta hai. Once you have written your book, um, it, it need not be the full book. Once you've written about three or four chapters and you feel that this is something that can, you know, become a full-fledged book, uh, you can share that idea to one of the um, publishing companies. There are Indian publishing companies in India. There are international publishing companies. I can name a few. There is Penguin Random House. There is Harper, Harper Collins. There is Rupa. Rupa is Indian, a very large publishing company. There is there is Shrishti. There is Amaryllis. There is... Van Macmillan, there is Simon Schuster. There are about 15, 20 good companies in India, which are Indian or international. You can, all of them have got websites. And on the website, there will usually be a button called as contact or submit. If you go to these websites, uh, you will find the process, how you are, what they actually need. Nobody wants to read your full book. So you need not start sending your proposals after you've written your book. Uh, you should just uh, follow the guidelines. And guidelines normally are to write a synopsis. Synopsis is the gist of the whole book. 
which could be one or two pages and three sample chapters and you can send it to them this is one way the second way to approach which works actually better is not to go to the publishers directly because publishers trust uh, their authorized agents uh, the literary agents so called uh, these people also there is something known as a literary agency world it's an international thing which has been operating now in the, now in india for last 10 15 years there are some very good people running very competent literary agencies and publishers depend on these agencies because they because you know uh, the publishers do not want to invest that much of money and time going through all the things that comes to them so if you go to an agency very easy to find go to google type top literary agencies of india you'll come across five five seven of them you can approach them uh you can go to their websites and on the website again they will have the process of how to send a proposal to them which is very similar to publishers you can send it to them if they like your proposal uh they will uh, do a short agreement with you and then they will represent you to the publishers it is always uh, this method is always better because uh they will be able to you know handhold you and walk you through the process of advances through the process of royalties through the process of doing a proper contract and also giving you guidance to how to grow in a, a what sector is doing well what genre is doing well how your books are doing doing in the market and also connecting with media etc so they become a very important they are very important uh, pillar in this business of publishing so try them and uh, that is it once the book comes out uh, the book goes to the um goes to the market and it gets distributed as an author you're supposed to uh you know help the publisher and the agency to market your book by which what i mean to say is that if you are popular um if you have a decent social media following that helps if you do not if you're not on social media which is also okay but it's a handicap nowadays but you can always o- overcome that by by going for live events um, in literature festivals like the one that is there in jaipur or going to book fairs there are so many book fairs that happen in india and stand up on a stage and talk about your book etc try to reach out to media tell them you have this book why and invite them to review some of them will pick pick it up if they say this is a good book then others will buy that is how it happens this is the process the challenges are there at every step once you write to a agent uh, they might not respond to you because they overwhelmed by the number of people like you are sending the work you might think they've not read but they might have read and they may not have time to respond that can happen uh the the real handicap which i feel all of us suffer from and i also suffer from this and i'm i continue to suffer till today i think everybody does is the fact that when we create something you know a piece of music you know um, a, a piece of poetry or a book or a short story or whatever uh we fall in love with that and that is precisely the reason why we we actually done done that activity and once you fall in love with your own work that can be a problem because your work may not be that great but it is great for you so it will be very difficult for you to accept rejection um just to put things in context i mentioned about my first book which was as i said with yoker book uh but i was very upbeat because i thought i'm a great writer and whatever i write you know which has been accepted and picked up and published i wrote my second book which took me a year to write and nobody published that book till date it is with me then i wrote my third book which nobody published and i was after that you know i found my back against the wall for 3 years i did not write and then i started writing short stories for another 2 years and then i bounced back into writing so it's a journey it's very hard to to face rejection rejections are going to come it happens um salman rushdi uh, the greatest writer and let's hope he recovers soon uh, he himself uh, has made this statement that you know even now being the greatest writer in the world living writer um, unarguably he gets rejections even now so i think rejection is part and parcel of any creative person you see in the film industry top stars fail uh, so when you write a book write it with passion write it with love write it with integrity um if it moves you there are chances that it is a good book it's a good story it is going to move others as well but be courageous if it is rejected from everywhere to forget about it and write another one sorry if i made it made, made it very harsh it is not that bad perhaps but perhaps <laughs> i'm getting older so i tend to give more lectures than i should no sir i think that was that was very enriching and these are the exactly the kind of thoughts that the people 
who want to make a mark who are a budding authors should make a note of and i'm sure these are actually very insightful for everybody who's watching us right now i i genuinely really picked up a lot from whatever sir you just mentioned and right. uh, so so one last question and after that we can just take up the questions that we have from the audience sure. uh, and then i will wrap up at least my questions so there are a lot of interesting th things sir that you've done you've been a part of what was that one thing that kept you going throughout your journey um i think getting up every time i fell down i've had my shares of uh bad experiences failures rejections in every aspect of life like anyone else but just trying to tell myself uh, at the lowest moment in my life that one must get up and get up once again and try to do it's not as easy as it is for me to say or anyone to say but all of us know that um you know it's always life is hard right um you cannot make it any easier <laughs> but you can make it uh, easy for yourself but by not trying too much about your failures or by you know getting too much dejected when things don't go in your way because um sometimes they just don't and there are a lot of unfortunate people in the world let's face the fact who who are talented who are honest who are hard working i know a few of them who are amazing people but they continue to fail and they you know they just leave the leave the world as you know someone who's not succeeded so i think success should not be a litmus for us to enjoy our life we should enjoy our life and every time we fall down we should get up i think that's what i have been i have been doing i i it's not been easy for me but uh, yeah so far things are good and things are looking even better that's great so uh, okay now we can move on to the questions from the audience uh, sure. so so we have a question from priyanka bhandari and she asks uh, hello sir how do we publish our book even if we write it so uh, in publishing as i said you can go through the traditional publishing route uh, that is uh, finding a publisher or an agent and then the book will come out after it is accepted in an event of uh, an unfortunate situation where the agency all agencies say no all publishers also say no you can always try self publishing you see uh, there are a lot of successful writers today who have self published in the past i would not recommend you to self publish just because you feel your book is good and you want to you know everyone else who's saying maybe people who are well known to you people who are close to you you've shared it with them and they are saying the book is not good and still you want to go ahead then you may not have a great experience but if you have a inner voice from the core of your heart if you feel this is a good book and the people who are close to you your beta readers they are saying it is good then don't don't worry too much about rejection you self publish it there are there are uh, big uh, companies now there are startups uh, one of them is notion press i believe uh, they are open to taking money from you a short small amount of money i don't know how much but maybe i'm just guessing it might be few thousand rupees maybe 20 30000 rupees or 10000 i don't know but uh, they will at least help you get your book out uh, you know if you are very convinced and people close to you are convinced that uh, that your book is good you can do that these are the two options traditional or um self publishing okay i hope that answers your question priyanka uh next question sir is from rohit uh he asks i wanted to know about how to structure a graphic novel uh probably i may not be the right person but uh i have read a few graphic novels and i think it's a great space um um underutilized underread but i think the whole publishing industry understands the importance of it the bookstores understand the importance of it uh, there are sections dedicated for graphic novels if you are someone who has a illustrator or if you yourself illustrating i think it's a great form and uh, do write you must write uh, the big publishers uh, accept graphic novels otherwise you can self publish and uh, if it is good and if you get good reviews there's always a chance higher chance of the film industry buying rights for a graphic novel as compared to compared to a novel written words because you know uh, it, the story boarding already has been done and it's more visual so uh, go ahead and do it and add to this wonderful community of graphic novelists 
you have my wishes. Yeah, Rohit, you have sir's wishes. We really hope you write the gra graphic novel. Uh, so next question is from Himanshu. Uh, who is your favorite Hindi writer? He is asking. Hindi writer? Yes. Favorite Hindi writer? Favorite Hindi uh, writer. Hindi writer, quite a few. I'm a very big fan of uh, Surendra Mohan Patak ji. Um, he lives in Greater Noida. I've had, uh, you know, personal meetings with him. He's been so kind. Uh, he's been a mentor to me. He's such a he was such a celebrated writer in 60s and 70s and 80s. And mom used to read not 60s, 70s, 80s and early 90s. Even now, his novels are translated in English, and um, he's, he's a great novelist. Um, among the earlier uh, books, uh, I think uh, Manohar. Malgaonkar, if I remember the words, if I remember the name correctly, um, I think was a great novelist who's written some nice espionage novels. I remember reading, um, and uh, other great novelists of 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 our pre-independence or just post-independence time uh, are are good. But unfortunately, uh, there are not many great Hindi novelists at the moment. Um, yes. It's unfortunate. Uh, and there are two sides of this story. When my book came out in Battle of Rizangla, a lot of, you know, people from villages they wrote to me and they said this is this is a soldier's story and it should be in Hindi. And I told them that look, it might come in Hindi, you know, later. And it indeed came in Hindi now. Uh, mm -hmm. But the fact is, the I did not tell them, but probably through you know your platform, I can tell everyone that, uh, you know, Hindi books don't sell. It's an it's it's the truth. You know, people say airport pe Hindi book nahi mil rahi hai, bus stop pe nahi mil rahi. Isliye nahi mil rahi hai because wo book bikti nahi hai. To aap log Hindi readers hai, to aap Hindi books padhiye. Or uh, Hindi books ki har Hindi reader ke pas mein kam se kam, if not hundred, bees tis Hindi books to honi chahiye. Agar ham log sab aise contribute karenge, to acha hoga. Main Delhi ke kuch bookstores ko janta hu. The bookstore owners are such wonderful people. They have dedicated Hindi section list, but everyone complains that Hindi books don't sell. You know, Oxford bookstore here has got even a Urdu section, but you know, it doesn't sell. So, uh, because of the whole ecosystem crumbling and crashing in a way, unfortunately, Hindi, you know, publishing is not in great shape. But I must tell you, there are a lot of publishers, even the top publishers who are convinced that we should do something about it. And they're translating that is why Hindi books into English. And if we talk about Booker Prize, ki, so now a Hindi translated book, Rate Ki Samadhi, Ko Gitanjali Shri, who wrote it in Hindi, mein likhi thi. Hindi book ko English mein translate in English, then he got a Booker Prize. So it's not that we can't write, but sometimes we have to strengthen the ecosystem. Those who are listening, at least today, you have to order one or two Hindi books from Amazon. If 1,000 people will order, then we'll get a feeling in the market. Because at the end of the day, creativity is okay. But at the end of the day, everything is business. Whether it is film, whether it is music, whether it is film, whether it is music, whether it is anything right so books don't sell it's unfortunate yeah i think it's not just the writers it's also the readers own us to support the ecosystem of books in general whichever language we take up uh so sir uh, next question is from Isha pe main ek, 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 uh, I, i'm sorry to interrupt you i'm sorry to interrupt you जब मैं महाराष्ट्र में जाता हूं या साउथ इंडियन स्टेट्स में जा, जाता हूं जहां पे एक सब कल्चर है उनकी लैंग्वेज के लिटरेचर का मलयालम लिटरेचर तेलुगु तमिल कन्नड़ कोंकणी लिटरेचर मराठी लिटरेचर का एक बंगाली लिटरेचर का अपना एक सबसेट है उनकी मैगजीन्स आती हैं उनके न्यूज़पेपर्स आते हैं उनके उनकी बुक्स आती हैं तो वहां के लोग उनको खरीदते हैं लेकिन हिंदी भाषी लोग आई एम सॉरी नहीं खरीदते हैं इतना ज्यादा तो शायद उसके कारण क्या है मेरे को पता नहीं है लेकिन हम इसको स्ट्रेंथन जरूर कर सकते हैं इसके बारे में अवेयरनेस बढ़ा सकते हैं और अगर बढ़ाएंगे तो और हिंदी राइटर्स उभर के सामने आएंगे और इंडस्ट्री ग्रो करेगी राइट दैट्स दैट्स एब्सोल्युटली ट्रू सर शॉर्ट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम ईशा सर शी वांट्स uh writing in writing is a good career or not is a difficult question to answer but i'll be very frank in india perhaps writing is not a career option because jaisa maine hindi industry ke bare mein bataya waisa english industry ka bhi hai 
ऐसा नहीं है कि इंग्लिश इंडस्ट्री बहुत ज्यादा बड़ी है इंग्लिश इंडस्ट्री भी बहुत नेसेंट है इंडिया में आपको पता चला होगा कि एक वेस्टलैंड करके एक बुक पब्लिशर था इंडिया का जो बहुत बड़ा पब्लिशर था जिसको अमेजोन कंपनी ओन करती है अमेजोन कंपनी ने इस साल फेब्रवरी में वेस्टलैंड को बंद कर दिया ये बोल के कि वो लॉस मेकिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नहीं चल, चला सकते उसके बाद एक मिनट में आर्टिकल आया जो हमारे सबसे बड़े इंटरनेशनल पब्लिशर्स हैं उनके बिजनेस के बारे में और पता चला कि वो सारे लॉसेस में चल रहे हैं अब आप सिचुएशन देखिए बड़े पब्लिशर्स इंटरनेशनल हमारे यहाँ पे लॉस में इसलिए चला चला रहे हैं बिकॉज वो चला सकते हैं क्योंकि उनके पास इंटरनेशनल कंट्रीज में उनका प्रॉफिट चलता है बट हमारे जो इंडियन पब्लिशर्स है उनके लिए कितनी दिक्कत आती होगी तो हमारे को कहीं ना कहीं ये कोशिश करनी कोशिश करनी चाहिए कि हम हम इस इंडस्ट्री को स्ट्रेंथन करें लेकिन हाँ आपके आंसर आपके क्वेश्चन का जवाब दे सकता हूँ कि कई कई ऑथर्स हैं आप न्यूज़पेपर में भी पढ़ सकते हैं रिसर्च कर सकते हैं कुछ फॉर्चुनेट ऑथर्स हैं फॉर्चुनेट शायद सेकंड या थर्ड वर्ड यूज करना चाहिए टैलेंट उनका फर्स्ट वर्ड यूज करना चाहिए बिकॉज जाहिर बात है वो टैलेंटेड है और टैलेंटेड है तो लोगों को करोड़ों रुपये के यू नो एडवांसेस भी मिले हैं आज से मैं मुंबई में था कब 2002 या तीन में अशोक बैंकर को थर्टी करोड़ का एडवांस मिला था ये टू द इंडिया टूडे कवर स्टोरी अमीश को सात आठ साल पहले वन मिलियन डॉलर दैट्स आज की करेंसी में अराउंड एट करोड़ रुपीस का एडवांस मिला था बट ऐसे लोग तीन चार ही होंगे एडवांसेस मिलते हैं लेकिन नाइन्टी नाइन परसेंट लोगों को नहीं मिलता जैसे फिल्म इंडस्ट्री की हम बात करें हम टॉप स्टार्स की बात करेंगे तो सबको काफ़ी पैसे मिलते हैं बट जो बाकी लोग हैं उनको नहीं मिलते तो अगर आप अच्छा लिखते हैं लकी हैं और आप ऊपर चले जाते हैं तो तो आप करियर बना सकते हैं बट आमतौर पे लोगों का एक प्राइमरी करियर रहता है और उसके बाद वो राइटिंग को एज अ चॉइस चलाते हैं उससे अच्छे जो भी रेवेन्यू अच्छे आते हैं उसको वो जैसे भी चाहे यूज करते हैं राइट आई होप ईशा दैट आंसर्स योर क्वेश्चन एंड आल्सो इफ अ लॉट ऑफ यू अदर्स वर थिंकिंग ऑफ दिस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सर इज फ्रॉम अरुण मोस्ट इंडियन पेरेंट्स डोंट कंसीडर क्रिएटिव राइटिंग एज अ करियर हाउ वाज the support of your family throughout this journey what are the opportunities waiting in this field um it's a very good question um i would say that i was very fortunate um when i decided to leave my well paying career my parents my wife uh my relatives my brother everyone supported me and they said you can take this plunge in fact i had a little bit of doubt still though i was very passionate but seeing my passion and seeing that I was working five days a week, and Saturday, Sunday, I was investing thir- thirteen to fourteen hours writing mm-hmm. books. They realized that this passion is for real, so they supported me. But I don't think that is a situation in every person's house. But you can do nothing about it. Uh, Arun, whether it's a great career choice for parents, I think it's a it's a great thing actually. I don't know as a career choice or not because if you inculcate as a parent reading habit in your children, then their language skills are going to improve. their imaginative skills you know are going to improve um, and they will become better communicators if yes. not in spoken form then at least in written form which will be handy even if they go and crack iit and they become you know technocrats or whatever because at the top level when you rise when you're 40 you suddenly realize that your knowledge you know technical knowledge is not required your man management skills and your communication skills are the ones that you really need and at that time it will be useful so what i'm trying to say is that if you inculcate the reading have inculcate a reading and writing habit in your ch- in your children then i think they are going to become very very smart communicators definitely in whatever career they might choose and in case they become successful writers i mean they they are able to crack the crack this like the writers that i mentioned then of course that's that's a great career choice for them I think that answers the question for not just people who are watching us, but their parents also. So yeah, do people should actually venture into this? Uh, next question, sir, is from Surbi. Does participating in an anthology helps? I have recently shared my short poem in a book, and just got certification for the same. Does that help? It definitely helps uh, because more than anything else, it gives you tremendous amount of confidence. You're part of a book. you know in which you are part of a book along with 10 12 or 15 people who have given their poetry uh, you know pieces or their stories or whatever and uh, there must have been some selection process you have crossed the first yes. hurdle and you're seeing your name in print you can show it to your parents you can show it to your friend that's a, that's an incredible achievement and a high and it will give you confidence to do better things you know to write 
maybe a full book or maybe contribute in some more anthologies and i can assure you if you contributed in an anthology whichever department you're functioning you're working in you go to your boss or your colleagues and tell them this is what has happened even if they are non readers one thing is definite everybody respects a writer yes. everybody whether a person is educated not educated reader non reader everybody respects a writer so you will get that respect and admiration as well so many big things by just contributing one piece of poetry in an anthology right uh, congratulations will be on getting the certification yeah congratulations right. from my my sir as well yeah uh, okay so sir next question is from naman uh, even when we are motivated to write we require knowledge and steps that i lack which is why i lack to continue writing what's the future of creative writing um so uh, the you know the 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 steps that are required uh, to write uh, i think i missed the first part uh, what is the first part you said once again can you repeat it says even when we are motivated to write we require knowledge and steps and knowledge and steps that. yeah yeah absolutely so in fact if you uh, you know do a google search you will realize many writers have mentioned this that you should not try to venture into writing un- unless you are 40 because you know you have not really experienced life you know it i i don't uh, uh, i'm not someone who you know to come totally believes in it but then yeah there is merit in this argument that you need to experience life and when you experience life you become more mature and you can uh, write with a greater degree of depth and confidence right um so i don't know how old you are but uh, that should not uh, be stopping factor but that is definitely something that you need to understand by which what i mean to say is that perhaps you can travel more perhaps you can read more books and that will you know you can experience life faster than normally you would uh, about the steps for writing i think it's discipline at the end of the day passion is all right but every passion at, at the end becomes discipline you know so like for example even if you uh, whatever you do in life you know it becomes work at the end of the day so have a discipline have a word count whatever works for you morning evening going to a hill station on writing whatever makes you comfortable uh, write share it with people um you know people you are ideally not romantically involved with because when you share things with people you're romantically involved with even if you write trash they'll say it's great so don't do that people who are a little bit critical of you uh, you can share your work with them you prefer to your brothers and sisters i think and uh, they uh, will give you feedback and with that you know it's a process it's the, it it may not happen suddenly but if you love it enough you will find yourself doing it every day and there will be a time when there'll be a book in your hands right i think i think that's a very wonderful way of explaining and summing up for it sir uh i think that's the end of questions from our audience i would like to extend a heartfelt big big thank you from everybody who is watching us right now and from intern shala trainings uh, thank you sir for your time thank you for sharing these wonderful insights with us i'm sure everybody who was watching us had picked up lots of things from today's session and uh, they're going to benefit greatly from these from these takeaways uh, thank you sir thank you so much thank you very much it was really a pleasure to interact with you and to interact with all the audience of internshala uh, my days in internshala as i was telling you before the interview was most wonderful i met made some, made some amazing friends i had a great time and uh, all the very best to each person at internshala and all those who are listening in thank you yes uh, also for those of you who don't know uh, kulpreet sir is also the subject matter expert and uh, the person behind the training creative writing on internshala trainings platform go check it out uh, i'm sure you're going to benefit a lot from that as well uh, all of you thank you for sticking till the very end and uh, to see more of such interesting videos you must like share and subscribe to our youtube channel good day and take care everybody thank you sir thank you thanks thanks a lot bye 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 bye